EPA, you also have to complete something called the seven course pattern. Seven course pattern um, is consists of two English composition courses. It consists of English composition 1A and 1B. It could be 100 and 101 or 102. So it really depends on the college that you're attending. You also have to have a transferable math course. So the transferable math courses that are included in this is anything college algebra or above. Again, keep in mind, depending upon the major you're applying to, the math may be a higher level math that you'd have to complete. Anything um, calculus and above. So specific majors, such as anything in the sciences, the engineering, as well as business, have to complete, would have to complete um, any level of calculus or above, okay? Um, in addition to the two English composition courses and the one transferable math class, you also have to complete four additional courses. Those would be two from any of the following areas. So you can take two classes from the sciences, two classes from the behavioral sciences, or two classes from the humanities and total out to a number of four classes. Um, in addition to that, we also have something here called a transfer admissions guarantee program. And this is open for all community college students uh, who meet the minimum requirements. Would be 30 transferable units, so you're completing one full year of community college. Um, and you also have to have at least one transferable English completed as well as one transferable math completed. I apologize, it looks like we're having a delay with the um, the different screens we have here, so we'll be back with, with that in just a moment. Um, let me go back to the specific um, GPA requirements for the different majors we have here on campus. So for students who are possibly interested in um, the sciences, which is CNAS here in our college, Co College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, it's a minimum of a 2.7 GPA. Um, for anybody interested in, let me backtrack. So College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences is a minimum of a 2.7 GPA, with the exception of anybody planning to apply to a biochem or a biology major. In that case, the minimum GPA is a 2.9. Um, for anybody looking to apply to engineering, it's a minimum of a 2.8 GPA. For anybody looking to apply for business, again, it's a 2.7. And then anybody looking to apply for um, anything in the colleges of humanities, social sciences, so uh, what would be sociology, art, art history, it's a 2.4 minimum GPA. Um, so now let's talk about the different requirements for non-resident um, students who are planning to transfer. You would still have to meet the seven course pattern. You have to have the 60 transferable units or the 90 quarter units. If you're coming from out of the state or out of the country, I understand that there's not really an articulation through those campuses and the UC system. So what we would do is once you apply, we would determine what would be given credit for. So we would see what courses you're taking and how similar they are to the courses offered here at any other UC. If they match the courses, um, if the course description matches what we would teach at UC Riverside or at other UC campuses, then we would grant you credit for those courses. If they don't match anything, then we wouldn't give credit to those classes, but it would be on a case by case. Um, in addition to having the transferable units, the minimum GPA for non-residents is a 2.8 GPA. So all non-residents, regardless of the major, would still have to have a 2.8 minimum to be eligible to the university. Again, depending upon major prep, the GPA may vary, but you have to have at least a minimum of a 2.8 GPA. And then unfortunately, any non-resident students would not be able to apply um, to the GAP program that we have here on campus, okay? So if there's any questions, we'll again answer those at the end of this presentation. So let's talk about the different colleges that we have here on our campus. We have a total of 90 different majors on campus, broken down into four different colleges. 
So we have our College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, which you'll hear the acronym CHAS. So CHAS is College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. And within that major, you'll find your sociology, your history, your art history, anthropology, dance, um, media, cultural studies, et cetera. So there's a wide variety of majors that fall within that college. We have our College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, which um, you'll find your bio, your chemistry, biology, neuroscience, science, etc. And then, um, so the College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, the acronym for that you'll hear a lot is CNAS. We also have our Bourne's College of Engineering, which is known as BCOE, and within there you'll find a wide variety of majors from mechanical engineering to electrical engineering. The cool thing about our um, engineering here on our campus, the BCOE, is that students who are coming uh, from high school who are high achieving students are able to apply for our BS plus MS program here on campus. So what that is, it's for high achieving students again, um, prospective students planning to apply, you would apply as a BS plus MS, meaning you would come in, you'd complete your four years of your undergrad degree and then go on to a fifth year and finish your master's degree. So with MBCOE, there's a wide variety of majors that are offered um, that, that you would be able to fall into. So if you do apply to a BS plus MS program and maybe you're not admitted to the BS plus MS, you're not eligible for it, you would still be considered for just the bachelors of science of that program. So that's a really neat uh, program we have here on our campus. So we talked about CHAS, College of Natural, um, College of Humanities and Agri Humanities and Social Sciences, I apologize, um, CNAS, BCOE, and then we have SOBA, which is our School of Business Administration on campus here. So um, any freshman who may be applying to SOBA, it's just an early reminder that you would actually be applying to pre-business. Once you are accepted and you've matriculated into the university, you would then be eligible to become a business administration major. So don't worry if you're filling out the application and you see that um, business administration isn't an option for you to fill out. So we have CNAS, CHAS, BCOE, and SOBA, the different colleges available on our campus. Um, we also have our medical school, and I know this is a little early for that, but for students who are planning to maybe go down the line of the medical path, a medical school is an option for students who are interested once they obtain their, their bachelor's degree. So we have a pretty neat program as well for our School of Medicine. It's um, called the Thomas Hyder Program. So what that is, is it's for students who have attended UC Riverside for all four years, who are high achieving students who decide to apply to this program, could be granted guaranteed admissions into the Thomas Hyder program. So that's another thing to keep an eye out if you're interested in planning to attend a medical school. Um, there are great benefits to applying to this program. Um, it's assisting you, again, it's guaranteeing students who've done all four years here to go to medical school here. But we also know how difficult it may be to get into a medical school in the West Coast. So this is just another plus allowing for students to stay local. And then um, another great thing about the medical school is that we are looking for local students to apply to, um, to, to UC Riverside, okay? Um, I'm going to answer a few questions that I have here, so just bear with me for a moment. Um, I have a question from somebody asking, it, do I have to live on campus my first year at UC Riverside? That's a really good question. Um, actually the answer to that is no. There is no mandatory um, on-house living that you'd have to stay here your first year at UC Riverside. It's an option for students to stay on campus. It's really up to you if you want to or not, but we do encourage, we do encourage students to stay on campus just because you're really getting that college um, experience. Um, you're going to be able to meet other students. You're going to integrate into the campus. Um, there's study sessions through the dormitory, so it's just something we highly encourage students to consider. Plus about 75% of our freshmen do live on campus their first year and then continue to do so later on. Uh, another great thing about housing here on campus is that if you apply by the deadline, you're actually guaranteed your first two years of um, on-campus housing. 
Uh, after that, students never seem to have a problem finding housing, so that's something I do encourage you to do. Uh, let me answer this next question I have. It says, do you accept AP and IB exams? Uh, the answer to that is yes. We do accept AP and IB exams. We do accept both. So if you have any of those exams, please make sure to report them on your application as well as when you intend to take those exams. Um, and then we will give credit as it's appropriate. Um, as far as AP exams, it's anything a 3, 4, or 5 uh, that we grant credit to, and IB is a 5, 6, or 7, or higher that we would grant credit to. Um, I have another question here. It says, when will I be able to apply for fall 2015 admissions? That's a good question. You, the application actually opens in October. Um, so every year it opens in October. However, students cannot submit anything officially until November. So you have that one month time period where you can start filling out the application, but you cannot submit anything. And we do encourage students to start early on with filling out their applications. Um, just because it's a tedious process, it does take a while. And if you're trying to rush, you're gonna get it all jumbled and you just wanna make sure that you're reporting all information accurately. So um, again, if you can start on that earlier, let's, let's do so. Um, you will hear back, once you apply in November, you'll start to hear back, notifi notifications begin usually the 1st of February and then continue on about to mid-March. Um, so if you don't hear back on February 1st and your friends do, it's okay, don't worry about it. We're working hard and decisions will, they'll come out as early as we're able to make them. So if you have questions during that time period, you can always feel free to contact us and we'll assist you through that process. Um, again, if you are having any questions regarding the application, once you do start filling it out, we will assist you. Um, as needed. So always feel free to give us a call here because we're more than happy to make sure you're filling out things appropriately. Okay. Um, since we're on the topic and about the student asking about the fall 15 admissions um, and we've talked about uh, uh, notifications beginning, um, just a reminder for students who maybe are viewing this and who haven't already submitted their statement of intent to register and have been admitted. Um, your statement of intent to register, which is the deadline for you committing to a campus, is actually coming up, it's May 1st. So that's your deadline of when you have to make that final decision, say, okay, this is the university that I wanna dedicate my, um, my studies to and this is where I plan to attend in the fall. So the deadline for that is May 1st, okay? Um, so s another question here, it says, if I am placed in advanced level math, such as calculus, Am I still expected to take geometry? Another good question. So for students who are coming in fall 15 and beyond, uh, geometry is actually now a requirement that students have to complete in order to be eligible to the university. So um, let's say that you do come in and you place into a calculus course, that doesn't mean you've bypassed geometry. Unfortunately, you do have to take geometry because it is a requirement. And just because you place into a higher level math doesn't mean that you don't have to go back and take it. So again, if there's any questions regarding that, feel free to give us a call. You can email us and we'll be more than happy to listen to your situation um, and then tell you best how to proceed. As far as any non-resident student or international student who possibly is confused because maybe in your country, geometry isn't the title of the course that you take because you take integrated math type courses, it's okay. Um, again, if, if you give us a call or if you email us and explain your situation, we'll tell you how to best appropriately take the course in your country to make sure that you're meeting the requirements so that you're eligible when you do apply to UC Riverside in the fall, okay? Um, I have another question here. It says, if I'm a transfer student and want to apply to bio, do I have to complete all major prep prior to coming? Again, another good question. So yes, any student, any transfer student, okay, so we're back at transfer, this doesn't relate to any freshman student. So any transfer student who's a planning to apply to UC Riverside as a selecting major, 
Um, so let's talk really quick selecting major. Um, here on our campus, the selecting majors that we have are our science-based majors, so anything in the sciences, so CNAS, um, anything in the engineering, which is BCOE, our business administration, as well as our psychology, may have additional, well, actually will have additional courses that students would have to complete in addition to the basic requirements. So you recall earlier we talked about the seven course pattern, we talked about the minimum GPA, et cetera. So you would have to make sure that you complete all those um, pre, uh, pre prep courses that you would have to take and those should be available at the community college. So we do encourage students to make sure that they're working closely with their transfer counselors but not only that to make sure that when we're out visiting your campus that you're making appointments to see us so that we can best assist you. Um, we do have appointments available here on our campus um, every Friday for transfer students who are interested so we encourage you to set up an appointment come out and visit us if you're local if you're planning to just tour the campus for a day. If if not, um, it's always best to look into your transfer center and see when's the next time a UC rep will be out there and make sure you set an appointment because they do fill up pretty quickly. So get that appointment set up, we'll sit down, we'll go over all your transcripts with you and making sure you're taking the appropriate steps to ensure that you're transfer eligible once it comes time to apply. Okay. Um, so it doesn't look like I have any other questions on here. Um, I did want to talk, I, I mentioned about the medical school that we have opening up, I mean that we d that just opened up. Um, just a reminder for any students who are interested in that, the program that I mentioned is the Thomas Hyder program, but another great benefit for students specifically maybe in the Inland Empire area or students looking to maybe reside down here later on. Um, that the medical school is highly interested in students not only from the science-based majors but we're looking for well-rounded students from other majors as well so any student possibly interested in psychology who's always had the desire to attend a medical school we're looking for students like that as well um, of course you'd have to take the appropriate courses um, to make sure you're eligible for medical school as well as the MCAT exam but we do have a variety of different programs here on our campus we have our medical scholars program who assists students. Um, there's just a, variety, a wide variety of programs here on our campus that would be able to assist you best. So if you're interested again feel free to give us an email, you can give us a call and we'll be more than happy to, to work with that as well for you.